So uh, my wife did the welcome today. She was talking about Abraham. Amen. Did you know that you are still part of the promise that God made to Abraham? That through his descendants, the whole world would be blessed. Amen. And of course, uh, it started out a little slow there with uh, Abraham only having the one true child of promise. Now, he tried to take matters in his own hands when the Lord wanted him just to have an only child, and I can say amen to that. Uh, I am an only child, and I, uh, people ask me, uh, you know, or feel sorry for me. And I'm like, you don't need to feel sorry for me. Christmas was great. So uh, don't worry about that part. Uh, so you know, Zachary one time, he said he felt sorry for me because I didn't have any brothers or sisters. And I said, to treat me like your sister treats you. And he said, I don't feel sorry for you anymore. So, but that's what siblings do, I understand. I'm glad I understand that from a distance. But anyway, God... Once he blessed Abraham and his seed so that they could bless. Yes. Okay? He blessed Abraham so he could be a blessing. And the same is true today. Is that God blesses us so that we can be a blessing. Amen. We are not to be a hoarder of blessings. Right. But we are, when we are blessed, in turn we are to bless others. And we are beginning a series today that we will be talking about how we can bless others. We're going to start a series today and go through Easter about the power of God. Amen. Because we don't serve a weak God. Come on. Come on. Well, about 17 people don't serve a weak God. Come on. Come on. Do you serve a strong God? Has God been there for you? Yes. Has God ever forsaken you? No. Has he ever left you? Negative. Are you ever alone? No. no. Now the enemy wants you to feel like that you're alone. But he's a liar. Yes. You can't believe a liar. Amen. Uh, if you don't know that, if you've ever had someone in your family or a friend who's a liar, you know that the opposite of what a liar says is the truth. And so when the devil wants you to think that you're alone, or he wants you to think that you're the only person that's ever gone through what you're going through right now, that's a lie. Yes. Because you have a friend who sticks closer than a brother. God is everywhere. Amen. So you can never outrun God. That's true. And uh, so it's good to know that even when you feel alone, or you don't feel the presence of God, God is still with you. And we are saved by feelings? No. We are saved by faith. Amen. Amen? And so, as we talk about God's power, today I, I, we're going to introduce it with, He has power over everything. Yes. But then we're going to spend uh, coming weeks talking about He has power over nature. That He can say, peace be still. He can walk on water. He can do these things. He has power over circumstances. Uh, that you know if you need tax money you send Peter to uh, go fishing and, and get tax money out of the fish's mouth he has power over circumstances he has power over disease yes. Amen. have you ever been healed has God ever healed you it wasn't, it wasn't what you know take two and call me in the morning that didn't heal you it wasn't uh, you know happenstance it wasn't luck but it was God who healed you now, I am appreciative that God has given us knowledge and wisdom and that the medical community heals people. I'm thankful for that. My family is, a bit, is heavily invested in the medical field and becoming more so every day. And I'm thankful for that because they firmly believe that I need medical attention. So, But... Maybe God has given wisdom to the doctors and, and you're healed through modern medicine. But there have been times that medicine didn't have anything to do with my healing. It was only from God. Amen. And I knew that and other people knew that. And so God has power over uh, disease. Yes, he does. 
God has power over the devil. Now, I like to think of it as that the devil, he, he goes about like a roaring lion. And, and what I've read about a lion is if you're attacked by a young lion, then you don't even ever hear him coming. Nope. That you're dead, you're the lion's lunch, because he doesn't sit around and roar, he just pounces and eats you and you're done. But the, what I've read is it's the old lions who've gotten a little lazy a little off their game, that they want to scare you with the roar instead of just pouncing on you. And I don't care, the devil can go around, he can prowl around like a lion, but we serve the lion from the tribe of Judah, and he is greater, greater is he that is within us than he that's in the world. Amen. You don't have to be afraid of the devil. I think of it like the Super Bowl, is that we all knew and they probably knew, the 49ers probably knew, they had lost the game, but they still had to finish the game. Amen. Now, if you're a 49ers fan, we're going to have prayer at the end of the service anyway. So, <laughs> but that's the way the devil is, is that the devil knows his future. Yeah. But he wants to take as many people with him as possible. And we know that we win this thing. If you've never read the end of the book, we win but we're still going about living our lives, doing what God has called us and commanded us and commissioned us to do until that time. Amen. And so God has power over the devil. And then we'll see, as you know, God has power over death, hell, and the grave. Yes. The grave could not hold him because he is the resurrection and the life. You can't bury resurrection. You can't bury life. And he came back on the third day. He appeared to hundreds of witnesses and he ascended back and now sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession when we pray in his name. But he has the power. Yes. And I'm so thankful because a lot of times in my life I have not had the best of something. And I, I had all I needed but I didn't have the best. You know, and so... Uh, I, I used to wear, I didn't have like the name brand jeans. I had the tough skins Amen. jeans. But not just the tough skins, I had the husky yeah. tough skin. Yeah. And if the first day of school wasn't painful enough, I would have to walk like this because those things were so stiff. <laughs> and it was uncomfortable. And, and I didn't have, you know, other people had, you know, the fancier stuff, and I had what I needed, and I'm not complaining. But when it comes to God, I have the one true and living God. I don't have a false God. I don't have a God that somebody carved out of wood or, out of, or chiseled out of stone. I have the God who made the things that they make their gods out of. And he is a powerful God. He's not a wimpy God. He's not a weak God. He is all powerful. Amen. And I just want you to know that. If you've not thought about that so far today, I want you to take a minute and think about you stack all of your problems in a big old heap and he's able to meet every one of them. Just because he hasn't met them yet doesn't mean he's not able to meet them. He may meet them before we leave here today. My God is able. Your God is able. Now, I want us to continue to bring our needs to the altar. The, the Bible teaches us to cast our care upon him because he cares for us. Amen. He loves us. But not only do we need to get obsessed with this coming and bringing these problems, as I'm going to talk about today, we need to talk about not only the coming, but the going. And what God has commanded us to do and commissioned us to do as we are going. In Matthew chapter 28, beginning in verse 16, he says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus has appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. It is always a good idea when you have an encounter with God, to start out by worshiping Him. Amen. Sometimes, 
we get the cart and the horse miscombobulated. And we start out, we run right into the throne room and we're saying, I want, I need, I need, I want. God, you've got to help me. But let me give you some pastoral advice. It's always better to start out worshiping God for who he is because he's worthy of all of our worship. Because as I mentioned just a moment ago, he is the one true and living God and he is worthy of worship. He is worthy of praise simply because he's God. But then we thank him and praise him for what he's done for us. We could worship him because of who he is, but then we should be thankful and grateful for all of the things he's done for us. Has God ever done anything for you? So we should always begin by worshiping God. But then this verse talks about a stumbling block. One of the reasons that some of us do not reach our potential in God is because of doubt. We don't think we can do it. That doesn't make much sense to me. If the God who knows everything thinks I can do it, then the Randall who knows very little Who am I to say I can't do it? That's not very bright of Randall. If I'm telling the one who knows everything, well, you don't know this, who do you think is wrong? (laughs) Randall or God? And so that's why I stand before you today called into full-time ministry. It took a lot of confirmation, but... It finally dawned on me, the light bulb finally came on that if the God who knows everything and has all power and is everywhere told me I could do it, I can do it. Not in myself, but because he goes with me. I'm not alone. If he's called me because he knows everything, he knows that I can do it and he's going to equip me and he's going to go with me and make sure that it gets done through his power. And so that's why when something happens, if I am to lay hands on you and pray for you or pray with you and you give your heart to the Lord or I lay hands on you and you get delivered or I lay hands on you and you get healed, it is not anything special about these hands. It is the fact that I decided long ago to be a vessel, a channel through whom God can move through me and through these hands and through these words so that you can receive what you need from him and not from me. It's very humbling to know that God works through us if we allow him to. If we let him. But sometimes we don't let him because we doubt it. Uh Have you ever prayed for something and God answered it and then you're like, wow. You're the most surprised person. That's doubt. When Jesus and the disciples went up on the mount of what we now call the Mount of Transfiguration, it wasn't called that before the Transfiguration. They went up there, and Jesus was transfigured, and they saw him in his glory. You know, that's always a good feeling. Have you ever been in one of those services where you felt the glory of God, and and you don't want that service to end? Good, because I don't plan to end any time soon. (laughs) But you just feel the Shekinah, is what we call it, the glory of God, and you just bask in that glory. But you know what always happens? At some point, you have to come down from the mountain. And when they came down from the mountain, believe it or not, there was a disagreement. There was an incident, a ruckus, whatever you want to call it, And there was a man who had brought his son who was demon-possessed. And the disciples could not deliver him. And when they asked later, see, the disciples 
as they're in my notes later, but I'm just scrambling them all up. I, I've, I've set myself on shuffle today. Jesus had sent the 12 out with power. He had given them power to go out and minister in his name. Uh, in Matthew chapter 10, in Luke chapter 10, we see where he sent 70 out. He gave them power to go out and minister. And so these disciples that had been out and ministered in his name and seen great things and had power over demons, in this case, could not deliver the boy. And they were curious. And so they asked Jesus, why not? And he said, this kind comes out with prayer and fasting. Okay? So maybe the problem you have, you've been praying about it, but here's a little advice for you. It might be the kind that comes out with prayer and fasting. So add that element into it and see what happens. Get back to me and share that testimony with us next week. But we see the Father. His words ring in my mind because he, Jesus told him to believe and not doubt. And he said, Lord, help my unbelief. And I believe that some of you in this room today need to pray that prayer before we leave this room. Lord, help my unbelief. Because God has a plan for each of our lives. Amen. Got really quiet there. You know, I, I'm Pentecostal, so you always make me nervous when you get quiet. If there's hooping and hollering and all that stuff, I feel okay. But when it gets quiet, I get nervous. You need to pray, Lord, help my unbelief, because God has a plan for each of our lives. Yes. Yes. And the plan isn't go to a church that has a pastor and say, hey, pastor, you know what, I, what God's been uh, laying on my heart for you to do? Whoa, time out. Come on. Let me tell you something that will help you. When God lays something on your heart, that's not my heart. True. True. I have a heart. And God lays things on my heart. But when God's laying something on your heart, he wants you to do it. Yes. He didn't say, oh, you know what? I want you to take this monkey I'm putting on your back and you go put it on pastor's back. God has a plan for each of our lives. God wants each of us to serve him and minister in his name. So when God is dealing with you about something, he wants you to do that. Most of the time, it's because you have influence with that person that you're talking about, or you have a burden for this particular ministry. And so I want each of you to be actively involved in ministry. My job, according to Ephesians 4, uh, 11 and 12, is to equip the saints for the work of ministry. No version, and there are a lot of versions out there, but no version says, I am to do the work of ministry while you sit back and relax. Wow, it got real quiet then, huh? This would be a good time for me to do a public service announcement. For you to go to heaven, you can't hate anybody. So see, you have to love me to go to heaven. Just so you know. Because, you know, I don't, I see my face only in a mirror. Because I'm looking out through my face. But could you imagine having to see this face for eternity being away from God as you hated this face and you missed out with God? That might make hell even more torturous for you. So what you need to do is you need to get over your doubt. You need to get over your doubt with the help of God through his power. Because God sees our potential even when we don't. I don't think you caught that. God sees our potential even when we don't. And God wants to use you. He wants to work through you as well as me. Amen. That's all I'm saying. I took the beautiful scenic route to get there, but that's all I'm saying. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, which we did earlier today, yes. teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. 
And some people uh, have told me that's the reason they don't fly because the Lord said, Lo, I'm with you always. But we see here that we need to worship God and we need to overcome doubt, as I've already said, and God has shared his power with us to do that. Our power comes from him. And he gives us that power so that we can go out and make a difference in this sin-cursed, hate-filled world. All authority. Another word for authority is power. All authority, all power is given to him, not only in heaven where we've not been, but here on earth where we live. All power. And that's why we can say, greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world, because of all power, all authority is given to him in heaven and on earth. And we see Daniel prophesied this when he says, uh, he sees this vision uh, about the one who looked like the Son of Man. He says, Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. Amen. Not only is he everywhere, he's not going anywhere anytime soon. He's going to be with all of us and he has shared his authority with us so that we can minister in his name. The Father gave it to Jesus and Jesus, when he was on the earth, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That what he came to do was express the will of the Father here on earth. And so he's like, if you've seen me, you've seen uh, him because he was a reflection of his Father. He was doing his Father's will everyone will serve him. Now, I don't always get in on the best offers right at the beginning, but here's an offer I got in on early. My knee already bows. My tongue already confesses. I don't have to wait till later. I'm already worshiping him by bowing my knee and confessing that he is Lord. One day, every knee and every tongue We'll do the same thing. Amen. But we're already ahead of the game, so you can give yourselves uh, you know, some kudos today, some attaboys today, because you're already doing it. Yes. But it's nice to know when you're in the midst of the battle, and that's why we call it spiritual warfare, it is a battle for our souls, it's nice to know that his power never passes away or will never be destroyed. We can depend on his power and his authority. And as I mentioned, that he had shared that with us. And so now it is our turn. God is sharing his power for us to go out in the world in which we live in today and to be his ministers in this world. The world in which we live here in Yakima, the Yakima Valley and beyond. God is sharing his power with us to make a difference. And so we talk about, you know, this coming and bringing our needs to him, but I want to also talk about getting what we need when we come to the altar, wherever that altar is in your prayer closet, wherever that you're casting your care upon him, you're coming to him, you're casting that care, you're, you're unburdening yourself of these needs. But also, he's telling us here to go. He told the disciples to go. The majority of the name God is go. Yes. You know, sometimes we get into a comfort zone, and so we just want to stay. But God tells us to go. Or probably the best translation of that great commission is, as you are going, wherever it is that you go. And I know you go places because you've come here. You're not in bed, you're not in your house, you're out and about, you're here. Probably the best translation of that is, as you are going wherever you go, make disciples. Okay? It's always been interesting to me that he did not command us or commission us to go and make converts. 
He wants us not only to lead people to the Lord, but help them get a firm foundation and to grow, to put down strong roots in the Word of God to where they can grow up to be strong and healthy disciples. But if you're not strong and healthy, it's hard for you to make a strong and healthy disciple because we multiply ourselves. And so if you are worried about not being a strong disciple, you need to work on that as you are going and as you're telling other people. But it's not just, oh, they prayed this prayer with me, now they're a Christian, uh, and you go off and leave them. That would be, to me, analogous of you running across a woman who's giving birth, you help deliver the baby, and you're like, see ya, good luck with all that and you take off. What God wants us to do is to pour into other people that come to Christ and help them grow into strong disciples who can replicate themselves as well. Amen. Go and make disciples, not just converts. And he wants us to use this power to minister to others as he did. We are to be a continuation of the ministry of Jesus here on earth. Amen. And I've never read, in all of my studies, I've never read where, of any acceptable excuses as to why you shouldn't do that. Well, you don't know my personality, Pastor. I'm really shy. I don't have any gifts. I don't have any talents. That's not true. That is not true. God didn't just say, I want people that I've called into full-time ministry to do this. He wants all of us. Everyone say all. all. All of us to do this. Not some of us or a few of us or anyone but you. He wants all of us to do this. Amen. So we are to continue the ministry that Jesus had here on earth when he went back to the Father and he's preparing a place for us to go. And so we need to give all that we have in service to the Lord, first of all, because we love him. He loved us when we were yet sinners, and he made a way for us to spend eternity with him. So out of gratitude and out of love, we serve him. And he commanded us to do this. It's not the great suggestion. It's the great commission. The great, he, he commissioned us to do this. Matthew 24, 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Have you ever had a day when you just wanted the Lord to return? Yes. Okay. Well, you can help that happen by witnessing. Amen. That's what it says. That... The kingdom, this gospel, which means good news, the good news of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Did you know that I've heard a lot of people talk about this, that if we mobilized ourselves, I mean, there's already people working at this and doing this and preaching and making disciples, but it's an attainable goal that we could fulfill the great commission in our lifetime. That every people group that has never heard what they call unreached people groups, every unreached people group who's never heard about Jesus because of the tools and the technology that we have now, every people group could hear the gospel of Jesus Christ in our lifetimes, fulfilling the Great Commission, making this verse come true, and ready for us to go up. Amen. But we have to do our part. We don't just sit on the sidelines and cheer and say, oh, you go, you do it. But when God speaks to us about that person in our school, in our neighborhood, in our family, uh, at the market, wherever it is that we see this person, the Lord says, you need to tell them what I've done for you. That's the best witnessing tool we have. People say, well, I've not had any training. Okay. Here's what you do. You practice what we call the elevator speech. Do you know what the elevator speech is? It's not elevators were invented. No, it is you get your testimony. You work on your testimony. You know what a testimony is, what God has done for you, your story with God. You get that 
into a, a, a short, concise version that if you were to get on an elevator and just go up one floor, you could share your, your testimony with someone on an elevator. But you get in there and you work on that testimony. And, you know, most of us can shorten our testimonies if we just took out one word. Uh, mm. But you need to have your testimony where you can share it at any time in any place. The word talks about being instant in season Amen. and out of season. And so we could fulfill the Great Commission in our lifetimes because this Great Commission, this good news, this gospel is for all people. And it could be, it's for, you know, I love the fact that when Jesus walked the earth, he was breaking barriers all the time. Amen. Going against the social norms, and what I love is the fact that the gospel is for all people. All. All. That has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Yes. Doesn't it? All people. And so we can take all of our needs, lay them on the altar, and I encourage you to keep doing that. Come to him, all ye that are weak and tired and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But also, don't forget about the going part. We're getting what we need from God. We're, bringing, we're coming in and we're laying it all out. He's meeting our needs. He's helping us. But don't forget after that that we're blessed to be a blessing and we are to go and minister to someone else after God ministers to us. Yeah. We don't just hang around at the altar and say oh I just want to bask in this oh what a good feeling oh I feel warm and fuzzy this is great but what about the people that don't feel warm and fuzzy what about the people who don't know Jesus Christ what about the people that are struggling what about the people that are sick what about the people that are addicted what about the people that are hurting so I want all of us to receive but I also want us to go and minister Because we're not to be a hoarder of the blessings of God. We're blessed to be a blessing. So we can minister to other people's problems in the name of Jesus. Do you know that probably wherever you go, people are hurting? Yes. Probably wherever you go, there are people that are lost without God, need to know about God. And we talk about, and, and we hear a lot about how society, you know, is hateful, mean. Well, I can explain that with a phrase I learned a long time ago, hurt people, hurt people. And there are a lot of people that need God to make them whole again. Amen. Bring all the pieces of their lives and make them whole again so that they then can go and minister but you need to overcome your doubt and you need to be part of the solution not just you know pointing out the problem we all know there's a problem I don't need someone else under you know to come on television and tell me there's a problem I get it I'm not the brightest person in the world but I get it there's a problem but there's also a solution right. and we are to be part of the solution we are to pray, and we are also to go out and minister, to be the hands and feet of Jesus to all people. Christ is the answer. Yes. We used to, I used to sing that song as a, a child. Christ is the answer for all of our problems. Also sang that song, Father Abraham. Did you ever sing that song? I was thinking about that earlier, talking about Abraham. Father Abraham had many sons. And I am one of them. Yeah, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. And then we did the right arm, the left arm, the right. <laughs> so the next time you're wondering if God wants you to go, I want you to see this image. But not only is it all authority for all people, all things. I want you to teach them all things that I have commanded you. 
I think about all the words of Jesus, all of the teachings of Jesus, but I also think of all of the actions of Jesus. That God loved us so much that the Father sent his Son to teach us how to live and to show us how to live. That is some strong love right there. I mean, if you, if you look at the Bible and you see humanity throughout history, we don't get it. We weren't getting it. It's like, serve God, away from God, serve God, turn from God, you know, sin, repent, repent, and sin. So God, who knows everything, sent his son, and he taught us how to live, and he showed us how to live. And if you and I are not resembling, if our lives are not resembling what Jesus did here on earth, then we can do better. Because we are Christians. We are of the group who follows Christ. We are Christ followers. But can people tell that just by the way we live? Do they have to see our t-shirts? Do they have to look at our bumper stickers? Do they have to look at any jewelry we might be wearing? Or can they just tell that from looking at your life? how that you live. As I mentioned, Christ has power over all these things when Christ tells us to go and to make disciples and to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit as we did today. And I'm just thankful that we're going to, people who said, I can't come today, but I will be here in April. So April 5th, we will do the same thing. And I would love it if we had the tub filled every week because that means people are coming into a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So it would be great just to have the thing running all the time, heated all the time. Because I believe that as we go in these last days, I believe these are the last days. I mean, when you see everything that's happening, if that doesn't make you think, then you, your thinker is a thinker. Because this these things that are coming together. If you have even just a casual reading of the Bible, it should make you think, hey, didn't I read something about this? Yep, you did. But at, until the end comes, and God always has a plan. Yes. He's working that plan. We saw that in Egypt. When the children of Israel were slaves in Egypt, they, they came out when they had been there 430 years to the day. It wasn't happenstance. It wasn't random. God had a plan when he was ready for it. You know, he kept hardening uh, Pharaoh's heart. There was that back and forth there, and then at the appointed time, to the day, God brought them out. God has a time that he is going to send his son. Amen. I don't know that time. If I was to tell you what that time was, I would be a false prophet. Because the guy who's making the trip, Jesus Christ, said, I don't even know the time. So don't be deceived by these people who say, well, I do. I know more than Jesus Christ. Listen to me. Buy my book. No, thank you. I don't need to spend my money on false prophecy. But here's what that I learned even as a child. I don't know when he's coming, so I better be prepared all the time. Amen. It could be today, it could be tomorrow, it could be in the future. And people say, well, I'm disappointed he hasn't come yet. Well, that just means we're that much closer. Amen. I mean, you can look at the glass half full or half empty or say, oh, you had a glass? But I'm telling you that we're that much closer because we're living in the last days. Amen. God said it. It's going to happen. 
just because it hasn't happened yet, I haven't given up hope. And I may not be here when it happens, and that's okay. Because to be absent from the body, I'll be present with Jesus. But if I am here, I want to be ready. Even if I'm having a bad day, even if things aren't going my way that day, I want to be ready to go meet Jesus. And so it's better to live like this is my last day. Now, I plan like I'm going to live 10,000 years, but I live like this is the day because I don't want to take a chance. I want to be ready when he comes. Did you ever see that that old movie they showed uh, in churches, and it's about the rapture? Did you ever see that where there's there's, uh, someone's frying bacon, and then they sing that song, I wish they'd all been ready? That just, you know, that gets my attention every time because I like to fry bacon. (laughs) So I might as well use that as a time of worship. But they got left behind. Now it just so happens I was blessed as a kid. I got to see these movies at church. That's the only movies we could see, but we could see the ones at church. And we used to have camp meeting in this tabernacle that was in the direct flight path for Charlotte Douglas International Airport. As a matter of fact, they, no longer, they condemned the place because it was so close to the airport. But I remember as a child being in a camp meeting service, and that place would start to rumble and shake, and you would hear, that was a blessing because I confessed to things I just thought about doing. Because I thought, this is it. This is it. You know you've grown up in church when you think you've missed the rapture. Did that ever happen to anybody? You thought you'd missed it? That feeling you had? That happened to me at a campground one time. My parents had left the dog at the campsite. They'd left the camper open. They were nowhere to be found. And I thought, surely they're out taking a walk. So I ran through the whole campground, looked down every street. What's that be of a campground? I didn't see them. I'm like, that's it. That's what the preacher's been yelling about. (laughs) And of course, I'm stuck here with that stinking poodle. (laughs) That my mom got for me. Thanks, mom. And then, you know, I'm in a panic thinking about that frying bacon and I've missed it. But there was that feeling that I thought, I never want to feel that ever again in my whole life. So I'm going to make a concerted effort to be ready every day. Every day. Because I want to go live with him for eternity. But when I go there, I want to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. I don't want to be asked a question. I don't know that that he would ask me this, but I don't want to be thinking about, oh, I could have done more. or Why did I doubt? Why did I have fear when I could have done more for the kingdom of God? I don't want to have those regrets. I want to work for God while it is yet day. So my connection was lost. So what's that, uh, what's that next slide say? So when Christ commands us to do this, I want to do it. I want to teach people the way to be strong Christ followers. How do I know what this person that I lead to Christ, how do I know what they're going to go through? So they have to be strong. They have to have roots in the word of God. They have to have a good prayer life. They have to be sharing Christ wherever they go. Because how do I know that they're not that someone is, is going to arrest them one day? How do I know if they're going to be arrested? How do I know if someone's going to say, you recant, you say that you don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God or we're, or we're going to kill you? How do I know that that's what their future holds? So they have to be prepared. They have to be strong disciples so that we can stand even in the midst of the storm. 
even in a society who doesn't want to hear the name that can save them, I say, I believe in Jesus Christ. I am a Christ follower. Because I don't read where there's a special crown most popular in heaven. I do this for an audience of one. To hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Next slide, please. So we just need to do it. We just need to be those who are going out, and as we're going, we need to make disciples, realizing that God has shared his authority with us. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to doubt. We just have to do it. It's for all people. It is an inclusive offer. Hey, you know how many times that I've heard people say, oh man, that was on sale yesterday. You just missed it. Thanks. But this is open and available to all people. Amen. I don't have to have, you know, be of a certain status or have so much money in my bank account or be of a certain intellect. All people. Thank God he loves all people. We're all made in his image. Amen. And we are to teach all that Christ commanded. What, we look at that model, that role model, that example that Jesus had when he was on this earth, and we follow that, and we'll be in good shape. So they're going to sing something. And after I pray, and I'm going to pray that God helps us. And then I'm going to have a time of prayer if you need to lay something on the altar today. So you can go out there and minister in his name without this thing hanging over your head. If it's a sickness, if it's a, a, an addiction, if it's a, a broken relationship, if it's lack of provision, whatever it is that is gnawing at you, we're going to pray that the Lord gives you what you need so that you can focus on the mission of going out there. As you're going, wherever it is you go, be the light of God in this dark world.